Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Robert Coho Epstein. Well, uh, so tonight, let's talk about samadhi. Samadhi is one of the most important qualities or states that are cultivated in meditation, in the meditative practice. And there's also a way in which samadhi can be cultivated in everyday life. Zen teacher John Dido Lori said that samadhi is a state of consciousness that lies beyond waking, dreaming, or deep sleep. It's a slowing down of our mental energy, our mental activity through single pointed concentration. And that's sort of the common uh, sense of samadhi, which we'll be talking about for most of uh, the talk tonight. Um, I like the idea of slowing down mental activity rather than stopping or interacting with it. There are some schools that either directly try to stop mental activity or else see it as a negative sign of not having gone deep enough. In Soto Zen at least, mental activity is not seen as a negative sign, but Daido's definition points to some important qualities for fostering a meditative state. Physical relaxation is increased, emotions are calmed, to an extent, although they should not be forcibly suppressed, mental activity slows down and becomes less intrusive. And when these factors are present, it's much easier to sit and be aware of the experiential arena that contains thought, senses, sensations, emotions, and its essential quality of being both empty and awake. And there is one specific physical factor that allows everything to slow down and become lighter. And that is the quality of the breathing. Anxiety and nervous energy, distraction and unease are associated with shallow, rapid breathing that is high in the chest. If we breathe like we're running a race when we're sitting still, that is a very stressful physical configuration. Inversely, if we maintain a low centered, deeper breath when we're involved in activity, that allows us to stay stay centered and calm while doing other things than our sitting practice, even if we cannot correctly pronounce the word stay. So, How do we cultivate a nice, calm, deep, and centered breathing pattern? Well, once again, we don't force it because that just creates more stress and tension in the body and mind. But we can use our mindful observation of the breath, which is also one of the major objects of Zen and other forms of meditation to help us release smooth and slow the breathing. In some schools of Zen, the breathing is controlled to the point where it is very regular and slow, basically regulated. It's centered in the hara, uh, the lower belly, and is done in a very measured way. In Soto Zen and some other schools, um, the hara is still emphasized as the center of the breathing. But the breath is allowed to gradually slow down and naturally become more calm and regular without a regimented uh, form of exercise. In the Anapanasati Sutta, the Buddha advised meditators to observe the breath and note its condition. When breathing a long breath, she says to herself, that is the meditator, I am breathing a long breath. When breathing a short breath, she says to herself, 
I am breathing a short breath. So the meditator is very aware of the quality, the length, and the type of breathing that they're doing. It seems that if we have sat down to mindfully meditate and are really observant of the breath, that biofeedback will gradually work with the breath to slow it down and smooth it out. And when the breath becomes softer and fuller, the body relaxes naturally and the mind becomes more still and focused. So that is one very good way to approach samadhi, the state of being in which we are unified, focused, and relatively still. Another key to a state that approaches samadhi or one-pointed absorption is the way in which we regard thoughts. Normally, we spend a lot of time engaged with thinking and having various extrapolations and reactions to the things we think about. I have talked and thought about that particular function uh, quite a bit and corresponding to the fourth skanda and uh, other things like that. And I like to call those extrapolations proliferations because we take a thought and we build on it. We take our thoughts seriously and we think they reflect directly on reality. But in the Zen approach to thinking, we use mindful awareness to notice that thoughts are merely mental productions that arise and fall away naturally without having any inherent meaning. That is not to say that you want to ignore thoughts when they are important. In a previous phase of practice, I was sitting Vipassana meditation with a very experienced friend and she and I began to smell smoke. We left later in comparing notes that both of us had started out by noting the smell of smoke as a sensory phenomenon and labeled the thought, I smell smoke as thinking. Eventually we got out of the meditative framework and realized that something in the building was on fire and got the hell out of there. So thoughts, particularly ones dealing with current reality have their place. But to be obsessed and dragged along by the continuous thought process is a kind of prison that we don't need to be in. So when we're sitting, and maybe at other propitious times too, we can just watch the thoughts go by and not engage with them. As it is said in Soto Zen, we watch the thoughts go by like clouds in the sky without attempting to engage with them or push them away. Or as Zen master Suzuki Roshi said, Leave your front and back door open so that thoughts can come and go freely, only don't invite them to tea. In a lot of Zen literature, there is reference to no thought, no mind, and the cessation of thinking. With a deep degree of absorption or samadhi, thought may actually slow down and thin out dramatically or even stop. But having no thoughts is not in and of itself the goal of meditation, and this is a point of confusion for many practitioners. Rather, the point is to get enough space and concentration to be able to discern our basic awakeness and be aware of it directly. As Mu Sang Sunim writes about the teaching of Korean Zen master Song Sang, he found that many people were confused about the relation between samadhi and Zen practice. So he taught over and over that while samadhi, one mind or not moving mind, may appear on the way, it's not the goal of Zen. The aim of our practice is truth or clear mind and the correct functioning of truth moment to moment. About that second aspect of the statement, Son Sang cautioned that we should not become attached to the deep meditative state, but take our understanding back to our everyday life and normal state of mind. He said, don't be attached to samadhi. You must pass samadhi. Zen means everyday mind, not special states of mind. Moment to moment, keeping a clear mind is what's important. That is not to say that deep, relaxed, concentrated meditation is not highly significant. It is an important vehicle by which we clear the mind, whether through breathing meditation or with the additional focus of a koan or huadu. But then our next task is to make the transition from meditation 
to the kaleidoscopic world of everyday life without losing our clarity and peace. And that is one reason why in Zen meditation, we're taught to keep the eyes partly open. We don't ever lose our seamless connection between the inner and outer, between samadhi and clarity of awareness. Hui Ning spoke about this connection between samadhi and prajna, the wisdom of a clear mind. He said, this Dharma teaching of mine is based on samadhi and prajna or wisdom, but don't make the mistake of thinking that samadhi and prajna are separate. Samadhi and prajna are of one essence and not two. Samadhi is the body of prajna and prajna is the function of samadhi. He also said, if what is external and internal are alike, then samadhi and prajna are the same. So our peacefulness and centeredness and one-pointed meditation is not separate or in a causal relationship to our understanding and clarity that we take with us into the world, but they are all qualities of the same clear mind, the same clear awareness. And it's important to remember that everyday samadhi and clarity are not dependent on sitting, even if we cultivate them in sitting. The samadhi or meditation of everyday life is the ultimate field of practice. <laughs> 